This is my second hour physics project on dark matter. The universe is an infinitely large space. Astronomers have stared up into the night sky pondering exactly how large the universe is for years. Consequently, astronomers have questioned what comprises the majority of the universe. Referring back to the opening statement, one must understand that the universe is mostly open, empty space, or at least it's believed to be. Though the idea of the universe might provoke thoughts of planets, stars, and galaxies in many people's minds, the current fact of the matter, no pun intended, is that they only comprise a minute amount of the known universe. According to the BBC News, these common forms of matter account for no more than 5% of the matter in the universe. Other sources, such as Wikipedia, suggest this number is even smaller, and therefore challenge the logic of many astronomical enthusiasts. What then comprises the majority of the universe? Most contemporary sources agree that dark energy and matter make up the majority of our universe. Specifically, dark matter is matter that does not emit or reflect significant electromagnetic radiation. Being that this is the case, we cannot truly see dark matter and therefore have no easy proof of its existence. We inadvertently discovered dark matter by picking up readings of abnormal amounts of gravity from celestial bodies that did not seem to produce them. Applying our earthly understanding of gravity to the situation, astronomers decided that the gravity readings must have been coming from matter around or within the celestial bodies that we could simply not see. It is a scary, nearly incomprehensible thought that the supposed majority of the universe's matter is invisible. In order to best simplify the idea of dark matter, scientists often describe an earthbound scenario to explain it. Imagine you are driving a car at night on an unlit two-way road. The road has two lanes moving in opposite directions. As you drive in your lane, you can see the headlights of cars heading in the opposite lane. Even though you cannot make out the details of the vehicles, you know they exist because of the light from their headlights. Now, imagine that on the side of the road there is a car parked behind a small obstacle with its headlights on. Though you drive right past the car, the obstacle in front of it prevents you from seeing the headlights. So far as you physically know, the car you just passed does not even exist. Now that you understand that dark matter is difficult to even physically validate, you might be curious as to how scientists have gone about proving its existence. The first scientist who coined the term dark matter was Fritz Zwicky, who came about dark matter when he was studying a coma cluster of galaxies. Trying to determine the mass of the galaxy cluster, Zwicky applied what is known as the Virial Theorem to his work. Many scientists determine the mass of nearby celestial bodies by studying the motion of other nearby bodies, and the Virial Theorem simply relates the kinetic energy of something to its total potential energy, which allows scientists to understand the motion. According to Wikipedia, Zwicky calculated out the mass to be 400 times more than expected. Zwicky's studies were completed back in 1933, but many contemporary studies of dark matter have reinforced his work. On May 15, 2007, for instance, Dr. Myung Kuk Ji and his fellow researchers at Johns Hopkins University released a study that suggests the existence of a ring of dark matter measuring 2.6 million light years that envelops a cluster of galaxies known as CL00247 in Pisces. This cluster in Pisces is said to be located 5 billion light years away. Unlike Zwicky, these researchers study the gravitational lensing of the cluster to prove the dark matter's existence. Part of Einstein's theory of relativity, gravitational lensing is the bending of light around a body of matter from the light's direction of travel to the viewer's relative position. Essentially, the researchers noted that there was noticeable gravitational lensing of light around the cluster and determined that it must be caused by invisible matter enveloping the galaxies. Ultimately, even studies released only two weeks ago have shown that dark matter is a veritable explanation for natural phenomena in our vast universe. Whether or not dark matter truly exists, the sheer idea of its existence really just makes you wonder, what is out there? And that is the end of my presentation.